is joining the crew at the Geek Tank. At the Geek Tank. The Rocky Mountain Geek Tank. Hi, it's Guy with Rocky Mountain Geek Tank. I'm here at Mile High Con number 46. It's the granddaddy of all of the conventions in the Denver area. It's been around since the 60s. It's a literary con, which is very different than some of the other conventions we've covered. It's a wonderful place. It's very calm. It's not a very boisterous convention. Um, but it's it's one that I it's near and dear to my heart. It was whenever I was started working the uh, conventions, I started working at Nunduscon and NDK1. And we needed an operation, so they sent me here to learn how to run operations. So I've been here, coming here every every so often I come in and help. And so it's a very, very uh, dear convention for me. So, let's take a look. And I'm here with Linda Nelson, who's the chair of Mile High Con. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for asking me. So I've got a few questions. Um, tell me a little bit of an overview, a historical overview of, of Mile High Con in general. Well, Mile High Con was started 46 years ago, basically by the Denver Area Science Fiction Association, which is a local club here in town. And it started as like a little one-day, it wasn't even really a convention. It was just like they brought some vendors in, a few vendors in, and, uh, you know, to, to sell a few things, and and then they decided, gee, why don't we get an author to come in? Gee, why don't we do this? And eventually it just grew and grew, and so about the last, oh, probably 30 years or so, it's pretty much been a pretty standard uh, literary type convention, which is what all conventions were when they were first started back in the late 30s, that was the very first science fiction convention. Some people is kind of considered old guard because we are mostly literary, and there aren't as many of us around as there used to be. And um, but uh, conventions overall have diversified into all the different genres and aspects of science fiction, fantasy that there are now. Mm -hmm. But we maintain the literacy aspect, and we consider our attendees as members of the convention. We want them to interact with the guests. We want them to interact during the programs. You know, they can ask questions. They can, you know, some of our programs even actually get an audience member up on on board to become part of the panel. So it's a it's a much more interactive, much much more participatory style of convention, and and that's what makes us very different. So you don't buy a ticket; you buy a membership. And uh, and then also by staying on the smaller side. We, you can be more intimate with all the different authors because even though we're smaller, we actually have more authors than any other convention in town that attend. We get over 80 authors and, and also artists and speakers and just you know people of various uh, you know, backgrounds to come in and speak and participate. And that's why we call them participants. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's it's Sunday, and we're you know, we're coming to the end of the con. So, first of all, how did we do this year? Uh, we did it. We did pretty good. We didn't set a record. Came close. We did about twelve hundred people. Last year was actually our record setter. We had twelve fifty last year, and, and I count heads in the door. Not, not. So some people count. Well, if they came three days, that's three times. I, I don't do turnstile counts. I do heads in the door. And so we had about 1,200, and that's pretty good for us. And um, uh, we had a, a really high 
pre-reg, though, this year and a high hotel room rate this year. So I think what that told us is that a higher percentage of our people said, yes, I'm coming, I'm staying the whole three days, and I'm getting a hotel room, too, because I don't want to miss anything. Right. Do you have any interesting stories that occurred this particular con that you'd like to share, something interesting? It's actually been a pretty good convention. I mean, we really haven't had any major problems. Um, it, it, it has turned out really, really well. Uh, nothing unusual really has happened um, that that uh, that I can really you know relate to, unless it's something that's happened that nobody's told me about, which is possible. Um, well, actually, that in and of itself is not a bad thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The fact that nothing horrible happened is actually probably a good thing. So no news is good news in that yeah. in that light. Yeah. Well, one of the one of the gals I've worked with for years, Nina Els with uh, Broadway Book Mall. She always says that, oh, Linda looks so calm during this whole thing. And it's like, well, I'm not really that calm. But, <laughs> but I think part of it is, is it's because we don't usually have a lot of crises because we've worked so much of this stuff out ahead of time. We've tried to circumvent crises. Mm -hmm. Or if we've had one in the past, we set our processes up so that they don't happen, don't again. happen again. Right. And at least we, tr we try to. It right. doesn't always happen, but sure. yeah, we try to. So. Well, I appreciate you joining us for this for this evening or this afternoon in the middle of the convention. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you next year. All righty. Thank you. More after this. Come down to Adventurer's Quarters. It's so cool. Ty fight the urge to come in. He walked right in, and he practically died from all the amazing cool stuff. Sooner or later, you should come check it out, because it is magical. Hi, Troy with Rocky Mountain Geek Tank here at Mile High Con with Kaya and Phil Folio. Hey. Hello. <laughs> amazing artist, amazing books, amazing work. I love it all. Thank you so much for what you've contributed to the world and to the entertainment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. So part of uh, Rocky Mountain Geek Tank is all about geekdom and just bringing all different kinds of loves and passions for the different aspects of geekdom together. <laughs> what, what is your favorite geekdom to get into? What do you geek out about? Oh, my goodness. Um... Well, I read a lot, and I play a lot of World of Warcraft, and uh, and presumably I work a lot on our own stuff, so that's that's kind of where my life is right now. True. You. Um, I enjoy web comics. There's some amazing stuff out there. Uh, Shannon Garrity's Skin Horse, uh, uh, Gunner Krieg Court, uh, Schlock Mercenary. These are fabulous comics out there. You know, years worth of archives, and it's all free. All you have to do is put down a couple of thousand dollars for a computer. I bet that's free, man. Come on. That's right. Or if you, if you don't mind reading on something small, a couple hundred for a little handheld computer, call it a phone. Yeah. So, so um... I was going to ask a question. I want to avoid that one. Tell the other one where... Oh, I have my producer coming over here now. Did you scroll to the one you wanted? Oh, our producer, who also does artwork, would like to know, do you use a tablet to, or digitizer to draw GG? No, as a matter of fact, uh, I still draw the old-fashioned way, which is uh, with pencil on uh, Strathmore two-ply Bristol board, uh, because uh, I'm old, and I figure it would take me at least a month to learn how to use the tablet, and at my age, who's got a month? to spare. And uh, unlike many of my contemporaries, you know, if there's a solar flare, my entire output will not be wiped out. So, you know, but we'll be able to, like, sit in the basement and burn them for warmth. So, we're good. Nice. Are you still doing the art, or are you mainly doing the writing, I if I remember correctly? I do a lot of art anymore. Uh, I, I used to do a lot of art. I did work for Magic the Gathering back in the very early days of Magic the Gathering. Uh, but I don't do a lot of artwork anymore, and... That's fine. Your writing is excellent. Well, so. thank you. <laughs> and uh, for those of those that are unenlightened out there, GG is for Girl Genius. I, I realize I just used the abbreviation without specifying. They know what it is. And uh, also our artist-producer guy would like to know, how long does it take to produce one page of Girl Genius? Mm. Mm. I'd 
I'd say about a day. Well, a day for you. Phil draws the, the page, and he'll usually do about one a day. After that, I need to take it, and I scan that page. Uh, Phil does a little cleanup in Photoshop. Then I send a copy of it to Cheyenne Wright, who is our digital painter. He makes it all beautiful with, um, with all kinds of color. And he does that on the computer in Photoshop. And meanwhile, while he's doing that, I've taken a black and white copy of the scan, made it the right size for the comic book page, and I've dropped it into Adobe Illustrator where I actually letter it. And then uh, once Cheyenne gets me the colored page, I drop that into my Illustrator document instead of the black and white page. And then I have to run it through some, some little hoops to make it ready to go on the internet. Uh, I also, at that point, make a page for for printing, you know, a higher resolution, nice page for printing the books. Because whenever we have enough pages of Girl Genius, what we do is we collect it all into a book. And if I find that if every day I do a page and make it ready for the book, when it's time to actually publish that book, I have a lot less work ahead of me. So that takes, I'd say, maybe about a day and a half for everybody to do all their work together. Yeah. That, that actually, for as much as you, the quality and what you produce, that's fast, in my opinion. But I don't really draw, so. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time. And then, uh, I guess for my last question here, I'd like to ask, what sources do you draw from for your sense of humor? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Like, what's, what, what kind of inspiration well, what, you mean? You, or or what, or uh, something that might you have, uh, when you were younger, that helped define your own sense of humor? Hmm. Uh, I just made my children read the uh, collected Charles Adams cartoons, and uh, my son thought it was very funny. My daughter looked at me very strangely, but she's 11, and some of them had to be explained to her. True. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Well, gosh, I was very influenced by Dr. Seuss in many ways, Um, and uh, Warner Brothers cartoons, the classics. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Now, one thing that I did want, you said you had a book coming out, a new book? Yeah. Why, yes. We have Girl Genius Prose Books. Uh, We've written three novels so far. Yep. Uh, The third one, um, Agatha Agatha H. and the Voice of the Castle, is coming out from Skyhorse, and it's due to hit uh, November 11th. And now, so it, it often confuses people because, yes, we have to date 13 graphic novels out of the Girl Genius comic, and then the prose novels, yeah, they're, they're novels. They're the kind of novel you get at the, at the library, um, you know, chapter books. Um, they're uh, non-graphic novels. They have no pictures yes. in them. Right. No. <laughs> so it's two different things. Yeah. All right, awesome. And we'll be sure to put the information up for you on that so fans and people can check it out. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Back to you. Happy reading. Well, and that puts a, an end to Mile High Con number 46. It's a calmer convention, and I like that. I like the energy of DCC and NDK, and I like to have it offset by these calmer conventions where... It's more laid back and more relaxed. Um, We were able to walk right up to Phil and Kaya Folio and interview them without any major issues. It was a wonderful thing. So it's great to be with uh, Mile High Con, and it was great to be here, and I want to thank them for doing it. Also, this is a good convention to volunteer at. If you wanted to get into convention working, and if you really wanted to see how a convention works from the inside, Mile High Con is the one I would recommend doing because it's a calmer convention with an easier ramp up. So, you know, hey, if that's something that you're, you're thinking you're into, contact the guys here at MHC, and they will, they'll bring you in, they'll start ha- having you do some work with them and, and start seeing how a convention actually comes together. Um, so I want to thank Linda for, for talking to us. I want to thank Phil and Kaya Folio for talking to us, of course. Um, I want to thank Cass because, of course, I work her ops, so I really want to thank her. And thanks for watching. And this has been Guy. You've been watching Geek Tank. Hey, did you enjoy what you just saw? If you did, you can help support the show 
by going to patreon.com forward slash geek take.